Hello, thanks for joining me on another episode. One of my previous videos has been very popular lately. It involves a Jeep Rubicon on a steep hill in the snow, unable to move any further up the hill, even with lockers engaged. But with the addition of tire chains, the Jeep is able to effortlessly climb the slippery slope. There were tons of comments that indicated if I had simply lowered the tire pressure, surely the Jeep would have had more traction and climbed right up. I find this curious. Certainly, lower tire pressure is helpful off-road in the summer months. I myself like to run under 20 PSI for general purpose off-road conditions and as low as 7 PSI in the sand. But will lower tire pressure increased traction on snow or ice. I went back to the same hill to conduct a new test. It's much steeper than it appears in the video. First test, tire pressure about 32 PSI in low range with open differentials. With a bit of momentum, I'm sure the Jeep would make this hill. But making it to the top is not the purpose of this test. We are here to determine if the Jeep has more traction in these conditions with normal tire pressure or low tire pressure. From a stop, the Jeep does not have enough traction to climb the hill. Engaging front and rear lockers provides adequate traction and the Jeep can easily continue to the top. Even rolling backwards and letting the clutch out, with lockers engaged, the Jeep has plenty of traction. Turn the lockers off, so we are left with regular four-wheel drive, and once again, the Jeep lacks the traction to do anything except spin the wheels. In the summer, this Jeep runs 37-inch mud terrains, but these mud tires are so terrible in the snow that I swapped them for proper winter tires in the cold months. The tires used for today's test are Nexen Windguard, and they are similar to Bridgestone Blizzax. In my experience, winter tires are far superior to any mud or all-terrain for normal winter driving conditions. Back to the test. Let's air down to about 15 PSI. I have these little gizmos that you can screw onto the valve stem, and they will automatically release all the air down to their set point. I'm pretty sure I have these set for under 10 PSI, and I don't want to go that low today, so I'll manually remove them when I reach about 15 or 16 PSI. If you're wondering why I have two different pressure gauges, one chrome and this red one, it's because the chrome one measures high pressure in relatively large increments, while the red one reads only to 20 PSI, but is graduated in 0.5 PSI increments. Basically, if you want 7.5 PSI, for instance, it's impossible to accurately measure this amount with the chrome gauge, where this red one makes it easy. We've lowered the tire pressure. So let's jump in the driver's seat and see what happens. Second test, 16 PSI, four-wheel drive, open differentials not enough traction to get climbing. You can see one of the flaws of the differential built into every axle, which is the wheel with the least amount of traction gets all the power. With a 4x4 in a low traction environment, one wheel on each axle tends to get all the power, and it's the least helpful wheel that wins the prize. Now with lockers engaged, Lockers simply lock both wheels together, and with front and rear lockers in a 4x4, you end up with all four wheels turning at the same speed. This is a feature that is very rare among factory vehicles, and it's even rare among factory Jeeps. As far as Jeeps are concerned, only the Rubicon comes equipped with lockers. It's the Jeepiest of all Jeeps. Even here, with all four wheels turning fast, slow, steering side to side, Nothing seems to be helping this Jeep with low tire pressure climb this hill. Remember, when the tires had 32 PSI, it could easily continue up the road with lockers engaged. 
now that we only have 16 pounds per square inch, the Jeep actually has less traction. For a real scientific test, I should get out an air compressor and fill the tires back up to 32 PSI to show that it will drive right up the hill. But it is freezing out here today, and hooking up the air compressor to fill each wheel will take a considerable amount of time. Instead, why don't we install a pair of tire chains on just the rear axle and see if chains can help this Jeep climb the hill. Third test. Rear chains, four-wheel drive, open differentials, idling in first gear for extra difficulty, and go. For an even more definitive test, let's try two-wheel drive, high range, open differential. No problem. And one more time, just to show that even in two-wheel drive and giving it a bit of speed, it's no big deal. So in conclusion, these winter tires in these particular snow conditions have more traction at 32 PSI than they do at 16. And chains provide far superior traction compared to rubber tires. Thanks for watching. So I decided to do one more take, and I drove back out to the hill this morning. And I wanted to try one more test with the tires, this time at 10 PSI, with open differentials. You can see there's simply not enough traction for the Jeep to make it up the hill. Once it's stopped. Now certainly, if I took a running start up this hill, I could make it in four-wheel drive, but that's not the point of the test. So from a stop, with 10 PSI in the tires, and the lockers engaged, still just can't get moving. So I reinflated the tires to 32 PSI. And even rolling backwards and letting the clutch out, the Jeep just continues to climb. It's pretty evident it has a lot more traction at 32 PSI than it does at 16 or even at 10. And I worked pretty hard at trying to roll backwards and get the tires to spin to see if I could get stuck like we did when we had 10 PSI. I just couldn't. Thanks for watching.